Boom, so if we're in elevation, this is in depression. Now go depression, elevation. There you go. So now from here, heavy hit, protract. See ya. We're gonna talk about scaps today. Okay. I like your shirt. I like your shirt, that's a new one. How many comments do you think we're gonna get on our shirts on this one? Yeah, a lot of varied comments for sure. Some people really like them, some people not, yeah. not a fan. But I know one thing for sure though, everybody's gonna like my blue pants. I know that. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, we're, uh, we're talking about something that I'm like fascinated with right now uh, in this video. We're gonna talk about the scaps, the okay. scapula. So this posterior view, scapula is right here. It's this big like wing, you can feel like that blade right here that's part of the scapula. What's so cool about the scap is it is a bone that is directly tied in to the spiral line. So the spiral on its journey down, if you go posterior again, Tej, spiral starts right up here in TJ's noggin, kind of right in this area, it goes down the side of a C-spine, and it goes down and over the top on its journey down and under, mm. it goes over this, this scap. The scap can do more than this, but four main movements. Okay. So if we're in the gym and we're doing shoulder shrugs, yep. this exercise, that's what's called scap elevation. Okay. Scap depression would be the opposite way where the scaps are going down, the shoulders are going down. Gotcha. Okay, we can protract them, which is like, think of it like big bear hug mode. If you hug a bear, we're sure. going this way. That's okay. protraction. And then retraction is like rhomboid pull in the gym this way. Okay, so those wings, the scaps, get closer together mm -hmm. that way. Okay, so there's just a lot of information. Sure. Okay, so then it's like, okay, what do we prefer to see and what do we often see? Okay. Okay, so arms up for us. And some of this, for those of you that watch a lot of our content, this is gonna be some review. But if you lead arm adduct, you will load the lead posterior complex. Got it. What that really is, is scapula protraction. Mm. So that action leaks into the scap. The scap is protracting, meaning it's, that's bear hug mode again. Mm. So that's dual adduction if we bear hug. Right. Okay. Protraction of the scaps. Okay. Anytime you pro protract a scap, you are loading the posterior arm line of either the lead or the trail. Okay. So protraction on either side, I'm loading up my back. You're basically. loading up back. Oh, yep. My posterior. The back arm line. Exactly. Okay. Got exactly. It. Okay. When we're getting ready to start the golf swing, what do we see most players do to start their swing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So they lead arm adduct. Got it. Which loads the posterior line, protraction of the scap. Okay. So okay. all that gets loaded real early. That's real what we early. see a lot. Mm -hmm. And loaded fascial lines want to? Unload. Unload, yeah. exactly. So if we're loading this complex early, in the backswing, and for us, our definition of backswing is like from P1 to like max P3, and then we have transition, which is from P3 to P5. Mm -hmm. So if we load from P1 to P3, where are we gonna probably unload? P3 to P5. It weird. wants to unload there, unless I do something artificial and just hold this back. Like, mm -hmm. both are just gonna make the golf swing feel whacked out. Kind of crazy. Because yeah. then through the strike, it's kind of wacky. Gotcha. Okay? So instead, what we need to do is let's figure out how we're moving the scaps throughout the entirety of, of the golf swing here. Okay. So we're just gonna show the uh, boat drill here, but okay. let's show boat drill improperly. So this is gonna be L-spine stuff. So nothing is going on in the scaps. We're just gonna move this way. Hmm. Okay, so we see this a lot. See how it kicks out TJ's pelvis. It's all on the L-spine. The scaps aren't really moving here. Meaning if I'm right here and I'm just moving this, yeah. The scap complex isn't moving. All the like pivot is in the start of the L spine, like lower T. Right. Can be fairly unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's remember elevation, depression, protraction, retraction. Okay, so hold that right up against your, your shoulder complex. Okay. Okay, I want you to depress the trail scap. There you go. Do that again. Good, now protract the trail scap. There you go. So what you can do that's really, really cool to learn this and learn like what we love to see in the boat exercise is you can just hold either a PVC pipe or a golf club, 
right off your trail side and just move it in a circular manner. So how, I, there you go. And just do it instead of both shoulder complexes moving. See how right here I can just move just the trail. There you go. Good. Good. Now you'll feel it play in here. See how playful the shoulder complex gets? Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay. So what you're really educating is the, uh, like almost the uppermost spiral. Mm. So if I am working up the spiral line, going from lead hip complex underneath the trail armpit and over the trail scap mm -hmm. to move that, I'm going to have this, the, the scap, it is going to respond in elevation. So it's elevated there. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't go here going scap elevation, no. but as I'm, as I'm rotating using the upper spiral, the, the trail scap is elevated. Sure. Now in transition, we prefer to see a golf club that goes from a, a slightly above the plane to under the plane. The way that we do that. Through that little boat drill. There you go, through that yeah. boat drill. But the boat drill is really through scap movement, proper scap movement. Sure. And when you're doing that, Teach, go ahead and set up for a posterior view with that right across your, uh, right across your shoulder complexes. Good. If we're doing this well, you should feel a lot of the movement right in here in the spine. There you go. This is so much scap. See, the spine moves here for Teej because this scap is depressing, protracting. Good. Now it would elevate a bit, retract, depress, protract. See that movement? It's all in the shoulder and freeze. There's the bend that we like to see. Mm. It's all in the T. Gotcha. So if we want the bend to be here, more up, like the further up we can get the bends, the healthier mm -hmm. the movement is. Because like T and C spine is like meant to move. We're vertebrates. We're meant to bend, rotate, do all this crazy stuff. That's T spine and C spine. And the higher we can get with that, you're just preventing, in, preventing injury. The healthier it is, the higher you feel it, right? Yeah, so exactly. We just feel it all up in here. Feeling it in the scaps is a way to move those bends up into the T-spine. Exactly. As opposed to feeling it down here mm -hmm. in your L-spine. Yep, exactly. So if we're teaching folks like actual scap movement, what's going to go on throughout the entirety of like the backswing transition and through the hit, if we're looking at the trail scap first, the trail scap will elevate depress in transition and protract through the head. Mm. Got you. Okay. Let me show that. Yep, absolutely. So as you're turning, it elevates. Now it would just depress. There you go. Now it would protract to go through the head. There you go. There's the head. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it kind of feels powerful too. Like, it does. <laughs> it feels good. Exactly. Like yeah. if you go this way, boom. That action right there is like super powerful. You can feel like the, the, the load now is late in transition because this retract, like the scap is going to depress. It's also going to retract because I'm turning away from it. So now the, like my trail scap is retracted right here. Mm. So I've loaded up anterior line. So you've turned your sternum or gotten your sternum further away from the scap. It's moving here. Right. This is moving away from it. Yep. And that loads up that, that'd be anterior side uh -huh. of trail complex. Of trail the trail complex. complex. Yep. Just by turning this way as you're. Yep. And what's really, really important here too is I am not actively motoring the scap into retraction. So I'm not doing this action. This is scap retraction ah, based yeah. on, on the trail arm. Yep. Right. I'm loading it because I've dropped and I'm rotating here. See, I'm rotating my chest away. Yeah. That, that makes the scap retract, but they're two different pictures in my mind. Sure. One so is the, boom. The picture is not to go here, the picture is to go there. Exactly. So now you scap retracted. But this stuck feel is people from here, they're actively trail, or trail scapula retracting and that pulls the handle in the golf club underneath the plane. You see that a lot. So yeah. yeah, if we're here in a fairly good backswing position, but then I actively scap retract, so that pulls the hub or the handle too far back. Mm -hmm. So right now it has nowhere to move now. You so don't got room to do this. What do you call this feel again? Well, that's protraction. Yeah. 
Okay. But if it gets stuck back here, you can't protract as much, right? You, you can, but where the energy is going to flow is out this way, ah. too far to the right. So that's where you see that. Bro, I just ripped ass. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So, so that's where you see that um, club head kicking out this way with rapid face rotation. It's more the handle that we see kicking out to the right. But the, yes, but the face rotates really hard. There you go. Exactly. I got you. Yeah, it's. Yep. Because and that's if it gets stuck in here. Exactly, because I've actively retracted the scap. And we're just calling it active because the arm I'm actively moving. So exactly. That'd be active. Yep. This would be passive. passive. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. So the nice thing is about proper movement, we, we want this, and we've talked about this before, but this trail elbow, we want it to have clear passage through here. So me dropping creates that, that room for that to happen. Mm. But also if I drop and then move my chest away from that, see how this arm didn't move in space. I'm not actively retracting. This is stuck. Mm. Somebody goes, I feel stuck. It's because this, this trail elbow moves into the posterior side. Mm. It's behind me rather than right now it's anterior dropping. If I turn a bit, it's still anterior. Yeah. If I depress, Oh, that gets under the plane properly. Protracting makes me hit. Yep. Yeah, that's a different picture. That's a different picture. Yeah. A lot of people have that picture when they're trying to get the center of mass behind. Uh -huh. I'm going to do it this way. Yep, exactly. And they're trying to do this. So, and we're talking mostly about the trail scap. I mean, the, the, the lead scap almost moves just in opposition gotcha. of it, right? Like if I have elevated in the backswing my, my trail scap, the lead scap is going to depress. Mm -hmm. That's what creates lead lateral bend. Gotcha. So if any time that I depress my scap, if I just depress one of them, I'm in trail bend, trail lateral bend. If I depress my lead, I'm in lead lateral bend. Mm -hmm. But again, the bend comes in the spine. Mm -hmm. So if I'm up here, my lead scap is in depression. My trail scap is in elevation. That's what creates the bend in the T-spine. Mm -hmm. Well, now we talk about bounce, bouncing spirals a lot. Scap elevation, scap depression, mm -hmm. boom. It's really bouncing boom. between those scap movements a little it's bit. Scap movements, right? yeah. We're not really bouncing spirals, we are, but we're bouncing scapula movement. Mm -hmm. Boom, so if we're in elevation, this is in depression. Now go depression, elevation. There you go. So now from here, heavy hit, protract. See ya. Excellent. Yeah. So just hit a little pitchy one here. Sure. And what I want you to manage is the elevation, depression, and protraction here. Okay. This move right here where you're feeling this whole right shoulder complex moving the instrument in space. There you go. Very cool. Because now what's, what's really nice about the scaps, just from a movement perspective, is we can see where the tool wants to move in space. Elevation makes it move up. Depression makes it go down. Yep. So now I'm above the plane, under the plane. Gotcha. Yep. And then I can hit. So we're moving the instrument in space really well. Boom. Beautiful. And there's the hit. Good, and then just kind of wrapping this up with anterior versus posterior arm line loads. In the backswing, go ahead and set up so we can see anterior side. Okay. What we're looking to do early in the backswing, okay, is load the posterior trail arm line and the anterior lead arm line. Mm, yep. Okay, so let's, let's have you move, I'm gonna keep the handle right here, but move this pack what feels like underneath the trail humerus. There you go. Good, so what's happened is this is stretched out, this area is stretched out, that would be loaded. Anytime we're stretching fascia, we're loading fascia. This is stretched as well. This is loaded. So in essence, go back to neutral. We're looking to move this, keep this trail arm right where it's at, underneath. So I'm pulling this under, mm -hmm. under. Yeah. Okay, as it keeps going, It'll make the, make the arm lines eventually move. Good. If you really wanted to look cool, just load the hand complex, trail hand complex. There you go. So now we've got posterior trail arm line loaded, anterior lead arm line loaded. What's slacked is the uh, posterior lead arm 
and anterior trail arm. Now, if you put enough energy in that, the arms would bounce up, and as they're bouncing up, you drop and start to rotate the ribs the other way. There you go. So now from here, now we've bounced loads. Now we have anterior trail loaded and posterior lead loaded. Right. So if those are loaded now, you can hit through the strike. Bam. And there's the protraction feel that we've, we've talked about with the trail arm. Good. Good. Yep. So there's a couple of different ways to really work on the scaps. You can work on them like what we just did with loads. Mm -hmm. And most people, I think, feel the posterior trail load early in the backswing. So right. Yep. So they'll feel load right back here. Okay. Then as they sling this arm off, meaning like a good picture is the rib complex knocking this trail humerus out of there. So if I'm set up here, I have some kind of gapping here between the right ribs, like where my armpit is, and this trail, trail arm. Mm -hmm. I'm just moving into that space to knock it out of there. Yeah. Boom. So when you're talking like moving Boom. into the trail humerus, that's what you're talking about. So humerus right here, you're moving your spiral line essentially into that. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. Which look. loads up that posterior. Uh huh. Slings the arms up. Yep. At which point, passively, you get your sternum away from yep. the club head. It's going to load up the other side. Now you've loaded anterior. Thank yes. You. So like what you just did, show that position in one motion. So we're going to knock the right out, fall back in here. There you go. Do it again. Just smooth it out. Boom. Now smooth it out so it's bounce, float. Good. So now you're ready to hit. Boom. So you just you just manage the load phase so it makes the hit easier. Mm. Now I can just boom, boom, boom. Makes it real smooth right down makes there. Makes it really easy. Yep. Okay, so show us one where you're just feeling the load, that same load, where you're knocking that trail humerus out towards the camera based on that post. That's beautiful. And as it floats, you're going to load anterior. There you go. Really floaty here. Bounce, float. Beautiful. A little extra. Oomph on that one. Uh -huh. yep. That one had different load on it. For sure. That's excellent. Okay. So scap stuff's pretty cool. It's really interesting. Um, again, shoulder complex is fairly, fairly complex area to feel some of this stuff. But instead of just focusing spirals, instead of just focusing on where the arms are motoring, if we're finding kind of a, a neutral middle ground for both the arms and body movement, which we call spirals. Sure. That's kind of the scap complex. Connects them all. So yeah, it? if we're focusing on what's going on in the scap, it can really marry what's going on in the arms and the body at like a super, super high level. There you go. Scaps, baby. Flush them out. <laughs>